Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much again for joining me here. I hope you're having a phenomenal day. One more look here at Solana, seeing what's going on. Start off the week here strong. Uh, obviously, Bitcoin is doing very well. Solana following suit. However, you got to keep in mind, Solana was already doing very well, poised and ready to break out at this 0.618 FIB level here, the local FIB, and essentially swept all that liquidation. And you just got to keep in mind, if you look at these two charts here together, they look similar in the last 24 hours. But if you look previously, you can see Bitcoin is establishing lower lows, where Solana is essentially establishing higher lows. And that's a very, very big difference. Solana did not pull back half as far as Bitcoin, which is another reason why I felt confident in taking along with our community. So just a quick little heads up here. Thanks again to my community. We got, uh, got 27%, 34% for near protocol. And of course, um, what is it? Bitcoin shorted about 20% there. So awesome stuff, excellent rewards there, essentially for just being a little bit, you know, being a little patient and trusting the, uh, the analysis. Uh, we're going to see if this 161, 160 range is going to be broken. And the best way to do that is to identify FIB levels. So again, instead of just keep drawing out new FIBs from here to here, uh, obviously that's beneficial understanding retracement, but we don't know the tops in yet. We want to look at more macro FIBs to get perspective on what's going to happen next. And generally the best thing to do is to kind of rewind, zoom out a little bit. As you might have heard, when in doubt, zoom out. And we can see here that we got some local FIBs here. And again, Right there about 162 slash 160. Actually, let's tighten this up a little bit. I think it's 161 if I'm not mistaken is that 0 0.68 FIB. Yeah, 160, 180. You can round up say 162, but either way you look at it here, we can see a strong amount of resistance. Price comes up, nope, rejected, rejected, and rejected. So is this fourth time gonna be the charm? Or if you count it out, maybe like 11 or 12 <laughs> attempts to break that level, uh, if you just count the independent uh, daily candles. So, a lot of things we're going to kind of identify here. So I hope you can stick around, learn as much as you can. Let's go to start with some liquidation levels first and go from there. I do ask just a quick favor, just hit the like button, folks. Get this in front of more people so they can stop getting destroyed by moon boys and actually have legitimate technical analysis in front of them. Now, again, not like I'm the bee's knees of the best thing ever, but you can get a pretty good foothold on the market if you understand liquidation, open interest, and... Um, a lot of other key level supports and resistances. And I think a lot of folks kind of overlook that. They'll just be kind of stuck on their, um, you know, their, their market ciphers or whatever. And they, they look at way too many time frames. So just keep it simple, folks. That's what we're gonna do here. And what we're gonna look at first is liquidation. Last seven days, we can see everything at 147 and 150 got destroyed. Uh, I think it was this time yesterday. Uh, so again, awesome stuff there for longs, but I'm sorry if you were in a short. There's no real reason to consider a short at that point though, when you consolidate at a key level resistance. That's been tested multiple times at previous 0.68 FIB. It just doesn't make any sense to short um, in that regard, right? And especially with Bitcoin consolidating in that 62 to 63K range. And that might sound hypocritical because we took a short from 63.4 to $62,050 and the price came all the way down to $62,030. Like so is it? It was a good little <laughs> precision scenario there for a Bitcoin short. But as per usual, if you've been watching my videos for the last couple of days, like last three or four days, I've been referencing not shorting coins because it just, it's not the market to, to short. We've, we've broken tentatively bullish and there's no reason to kind of try to short just yet. We haven't quite hit our top yet. I think Bitcoin's getting close, but conversation for another day. We take a look here, 162, look at that. Liquidation level just above that key FIB level. Okay, now again, this is very standard. Okay. The reason why this area is up for grabs, though, is because market makers like to, to sweep that, those liquidation levels. And that's why we look at this. So this tells us that even though we do have a key level resistance at 161, 162, that, uh, that golden pocket, essentially, we can see a lot of people feel confident in having their stop loss and or liquidation levels there. So that tells me that that's probably going to be the next target. So if I'm going to secure profits, I would secure profits at 161 and 162. Okay, so just kind of a consideration there. Um, now we take a look here at the delta. It's getting pretty high. Bitcoin's also very similar. So if you kind of take a look at Bitcoin's delta, we can see we're about eight billion in liquidation longs. In other words, there's way more longs in the last five days than shorts. That does tell us that there will be somewhat of a capitulation. I don't think it's going to be massive or monstrous, but there is definitely a chance that we see Solana pull back a little bit. Uh, if we run towards 160, 161, absolutely, we'll see a correction at that point. Between now and then, it would make sense for profits to be taken, the price to pull back a little bit to a local, uh, a local support, which we'll identify here soon, and then take off from there. The key takeaway here is that whether the price pulls back or goes up, shorting Solana right now doesn't make a ton of sense. Okay, again, the market is on fire. You don't run into a burning building, right? Um, obviously, unless there's children present, but that's a terrible analogy. Um, I'll start over. <laughs> don't short Solana. 
Let's just keep it simple. All right, that's kind of the premise right now. That can change tomorrow, but right now at this point, I don't think it's recommended. We got our area of interest here, basically open interest. We've talked about this previously. 141 is the heaviest concentration there. So most people have positions at 141. So let's take a look at the weekly and work our way down. Today being a Monday, it's good to get kind of a start there. Uh, we can see all this liquidation got swept. We'll go ahead and remove that. We'll draw out some new, uh, new levels here soon. Keep in mind, I always post our playout chart on Twitter, Telegram, and Discord. So if you're not familiar, it does look a little something like this. Uh, don't trust anyone else trying to impersonate me, unfortunately. There's a lot of uh, scammers out there. I guess you know you made it, made it big if scammers are trolling your channel. They've been doing so for a very long time, don't get me wrong. But um, don't trust anybody direct messaging you. I will never do that. I'll respond. You can feel free to reach out. I'm more than welcome to work with you, but um, don't uh, don't expect me to solicit you and ask you, oh, how's your experience? I won't do that crap. Okay, so Solana 156, we're on the weekly time frame. We can see we're above all moving averages here, the 20 and the 50 more specifically. Those are the important ones. We can recognize we're over 50 in the RSI. Stochastic is starting to diverge a little bit, but that's standard for the type of retracement we've seen recently. So I wouldn't buy into that too much. I would, however, recommend considering the fact that we have a convergence on the horizon. Another couple weeks here of, you know, maintaining this range or higher, Solana will probably break out. Now keep in mind, it doesn't break out because of this. This is just kind of a, this is a lagging indicator letting us know, generally speaking, that we're, we're shifting momentum. But the more time we spend in this 150 to 160 range, the more likely we are to break through it. That's kind of the key takeaway there. I need to say the weekly looks pretty good. There are still some slightly, you know, non-bullish signs there, but the bullish signs are outweigh the the bearish signs. So just know that that's a good a good thing in the overall sense. You're rarely going to see like a full on 100% a weekly bullish or bearish scenario. It takes a while because it's such a slow moving average. That's where the daily comes in. I like the daily time frame, kind of giving us perspective of what's going on here. So in the last couple of weeks here, we can kind of see ever since we've been on the range of 110 upwards of 165, we've seen the most interest at 143. Of course, again, we can reflect that here, open interest, 141. That's a good support range. So the price ever comes back down to 144 to 141, I think we're probably in pretty good shape to see a pivot or a bounce there. Now, it doesn't exactly work that way. We've seen in the past, obviously, you can see the price jumping around. But it lets us know that we're on the right side of the tracks, right? We have more bulling, uh, <laughs> bulling, uh, more buying pressure, and the bulls are more present now at this point, and it gives us an uh, indication of support. We can see this here as well, MACD convergence on the daily. This is very strong, Bitcoin exuding the same behavior here. And if we do take a look at uh, the trend strength index, it's, it's over zero, that's fantastic. We got our money flow index increasing while it's not above the RSI, which I prefer to see in a bullish continuation. RSI is maintaining above 50 and we got a stochastic swing. So all those things kind of combined lead me to believe that Solana is more likely to increase. Keep in mind, a pullback to the low 150s makes sense at this point, just based on the, the simple sense that, um, you know, Bitcoin will probably pull back at least a little bit to, you know, start lowering that, that delta for the longs. There's too many longs in the market in the last five days or more so three trading days. Market makers know that they're going to go ahead and sweep some of that. Okay. However, that does reflect here with Solana 2 having such a high delta that just entered the market here. I think some of those late longs are going to get, get destroyed. Uh, anyways, when I say destroyed, it's just mostly just high leverage longs. So don't be concerned if you just opened a long and you're at like 5x leverage or lower. If you are 10x leverage or higher, you may want to worry a little bit because generally speaking, that's too high of leverage for a coin like this. Those are just my thoughts, but I don't like to get, uh, I don't like to hit the delete button on my account. <laughs> I prefer to see it grow and lower leverage is beneficial. I know, I know, I know you don't get as much gains as that way, but you also have a lot less stress and you can sleep well at night knowing that you're not going to... Uh, have to worry too much. Granted, there's times where you have to cut your losses, totally a, th a realistic part of trading, but for right now, it should not have to be that way. Most long positions should be okay if you play it correctly. Anyways, conversation for later. So for our time frame here, we can see we are up over 70 on the RSI, generally a sign not to consider selling until it comes back below. And I know it sounds crazy and weird, but truth is you wanna let this continuation continue if it were to. Uh, in other words, the price action could very well come down here and bounce. And if so, we could see a bounce off 70 on the RSI. And that would be a situation where you would be sad that you, that you close your position. Now we already had two profit targets on our long position for Solana. I think we took a long, what was it, 140? I forget what it was, was 146? Yeah, 146.70. So while we're in a good position right now, you don't wanna get super greedy either. So I would recommend again, just being Careful in the sense of just not uh, not holding things to the moon, as they say. There is really no such thing in trading because everything has to come back down eventually. But 
when I see these kind of things here, this leads me to believe that we probably have more continuation of the upside potential. Just know Bitcoin's pulling back, Solana's going, going with it, and it's a very standard, standard retracement, okay? What shouldn't be standard is the price to drop much lower than 152, because we can see on the charts here that that's a 0.5 Fib level, a recent high. There's a lot of confluence here, okay? And with that being a previous resistance range, we can presume it's gonna be a new support. So me personally, along in the 152 to 153 range would seem sensible pending Bitcoin doesn't retrace too hard. We wanna maintain the 65K range for Bitcoin before we see um, any kind of potential massive correction. Either way, everything else is looking pretty good. We are starting to plateau a little bit on our, our moving averages there or our convergences. So at this point, I'm not super concerned with that. I would just uh, recommend understanding that the price probably can and will pull back. So just be ready for that. If you're in a high leverage long, I would consider adjusting your stop loss higher. If you're in a low leverage long, just let it ride. I think it's pretty standard for the price to kind of jump around a little bit here especially when Bitcoin's maintaining its range or trying to find its range. But this seems like a very likely scenario. 152 to 153, a bounce off that level. We do have a fair value gap here though. So keep in mind, price could come down here, get a little greedy and come back up to sweep those longs. But once again, standard standard trading there. Uh, we take a look at Ichimoku Cloud. This is all the more reason to not consider a short position. Everything is pretty much telling us that we're in a good, strong continuation. So again, I'll post a playout chart here in our Twitter, Telegram and Discord shortly give you kind of perspective on where we're at here. But generally speaking, these are all positive signs and we're not in a bad situation whatsoever. We've got a lot, of, a lot of support below us. Key ranges here, I would say is 152. The local high should work as a new low. Uh, we lose that 144 to 141. You can start stacking your bags there at that point. We got a lot of confluence there in the macro. Uh, all right, folks, thanks so much again for watching. Hope you, uh, <laughs> hope you learned something today. If you want to learn a lot more, CryptoCash.tech is that I got a trading academy. Uh, community and phenomenal, uh, phenomenal community more so, but also signals too if you're interested in that. Thanks again. We'll look forward to seeing the next one. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.